So first of all, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, how long have you been playing? What's your favorite weapon? So I've I've been playing the game since the 21st of October 2020 when the game was actually released. Um, I kind of played it off and on, uh, maybe a couple of hours a week or something like that. But I didn't really start playing it until around April 2021. Interesting. How how much do you play every day or every week? So I do play quite a bit. So I, I play different kind of games. So my, my games aren't like most people where they go on and they play for two hours straight and then that's their pop one time done. Um, I'll be doing custom rooms maybe for an hour or two a day definitely on Friday nights with you know trying to build the community and give them something fun to do and something a little bit different to you know squads same old same old and just try and keep a little bit of um, sort of randomness in it and, and a bit of enjoyment but I, I then play with my regular squad for about an hour to an hour and a half an evening so that's my own play time whether I decide to, you know, play seriously or just play for fun and not really bother about sort of developing. Uh, and then pretty much in a week, I'll do one to two development days where I'll spend three to four hours training park, combat trial, and then solo bot battle. And that's to just keep my skills sharp that I've learned so far um, and try not to lose them and get into bad habits. I do find just doing same old same old playing pubs um you can get into some really bad habits so i'm aware of that i'm not the most skilled player at all out there i'm probably one of the worst uh when it comes to stats that's not the case <laughs> <laughs> I, I i try not to look at my stats um but i think they are a great gauge but on the season stats career stats i made some really awful choices right at the beginning and that obviously you carry that through. Um, but I do like to look at progression and I do like to challenge myself. So I'm not one of these players that goes into a game, plays badly and comes out and says, you know, people are cheating or, you know, like that wasn't fair or that team stacked or they're teaming up on us. I know solely what I'm responsible for in my game. And if I'm on it, and I'm really developing and I'm really challenging myself. I know I can be really good, but you know, hey, I'm a 46 year old chick, <laughs> right? So, you know, it like I'm not Tech Nine Junior and I'm not flying all over the living room with my airs or, you know, my arms and legs all over the place. So I have to be realistic as well. And you know what? I I'm quite cool with the way that I play sometimes. Nice, nice. Yeah, you play extremely well. Um... So can you tell a little bit more about your training routine? Because it's pretty unusual. I talked to a couple of people and many people can kind of have a training session inside the game, but not a lot go specifically to the training park or can practice something outside of the game. Okay, so my training regime, uh, it, it really is, it's given to me from pubs. So I will go in and probably have like a really awful game with, let's say, a Magnum or an MP5 or an AWP, maybe. I've only just started picking the AWP up after a year in the game. Like everybody's picked this up months ago. So I've never been great with a Mag, a Seiko or an AWP. Um, you introduced me to the Mag and I've loved it ever since with all those tricks that you you showed me and I still use those. But what I do is I like to tuck myself away, mute myself, go in the training park and do 800 rounds of DT. So I get the reload really slick. So my understanding is a lot of this game is muscle memory. And, you know, if you speak to the top pro comp players, they'll tell you it's all muscle memory. So, you know, to do that, I have to do something repetitive. So I go in and I shoot 800 rounds of a DT. I'll do 600 rounds of a Seiko and I'll do short range, long range and quick keep flicking between the targets and the people on the, on the target range. Um, then I will do AK to try and get the recoil and I've mastered some of the things that I need to do to bring the recoil down. Same with the MP5. Uh, AWP, quick scope, like what is that? I always get shot by an AWP with a quick scope. Well, I can't moan about it. I either have to get better at it and try and, you know, combat it a little bit um, or, you know, just 
quit moaning about it. So um, I'll do the AWP and I'll do 200 rounds with the AWP, which is really tiring. It doesn't sound a lot, but it's extremely tiring. Um, and then what I'll do is I will take myself out the training park after about 40 minutes. And then I will um, go into combat trial, pick up those guns that I'm training on that particular day. And then I'll do combat trial. Then I'll go into solo bot battle and I'll go medium, hard, insane. And my theory is if I can't kill a whole lobby of bots on hard or insane, then I'm not really developing and I'm not going to beat some of these really sweaty top comp players. That's my theory. Wow, this is amazing. It's very structured and you thought through the whole routine. This is amazing. And I do stream it as well because I want I want people to realize that, you know, to stream or to play, you don't have to be the best. You can be a developing player and it's okay for you to not be particularly good at something. And what I have found is, is people will come into the stream and they'll actually give you tips and they hang around because they can engage with you and give you their tips or ask you questions like, how do you do it like that? And you're teaching them. And this, you know, it's happened no end of times. And I find that a lot of people feel comfortable in that environment because they can relate. You know, they're not as good. But, you know, you might go to some really pro um, streamer and you're watching them and you just sit quiet in chat because, you know, you know that your skills are nowhere near that and you can't really relate on that level. So I find it really helps the community as well to, to understand that development is not a bad thing at all. This is very interesting. I'll add the link to your stream or in the, uh, in the description to the video so people can find it. Yeah, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Cool. Um, can you share something you recently learned? Like maybe you recently found that was especially useful or maybe difficult to master and then can you, you use it in the game? Yes. So the, the, it sounds crazy, but the most recent thing that I've learned is um, building effectively. So we all know how to build and spam build, um, but building effectively is really getting me out of trouble and it's actually keeping me alive a lot longer. So when I'm focused and you know I'm not just playing for pure laughs and pleasure and I'm actually focused on the game, I found that there are quick ways to build effectively. So instead of just pressing the button and building and spamming, you know, you go up and under, up and under, and it can kind of build you out, whether it be a stepping stone or whether it builds you out across a pattern like a hexagon. So, again, it's muscle memory, and I've been doing that a lot, coming in a private room like this, and just because you get as many builds as you want, putting some music on, flying around the map and learning to move, and movement's a big thing I find in this game. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll get warmed up and I'll start to build my way out of certain situations. So believe it or not, a year in, I'm learning how to build effectively. And all these pro players have learned this in the first three weeks. So I'm way behind, but I've got to say I'm loving it. And when it works, oh, my God, it's just the most amazing feeling. I mean, the other thing I've learned recently as well, and actually, I think I learned this early on and I did do this but then came away from it and I've gone back to it. The best way to get better is to play with better players. It's difficult to find better players that want to play with you um, because obviously, you know, everyone wants the best team and the best squad and the best chance. But I find teamed up with better players absolutely brings my skills on the end. So, you know, I could be playing with, let's say, a diamond division uh, competition player or an immortal on the one pop dot one stats player how they're ranked and i'll find i'm confident i'm pushing i'm building i'm advancing i'm taking different shots i'm getting the orp out more i'm getting the seiko out more i'm getting the mag out more um, I'm, I'm riding in with the dt whereas when i'm with a squad that's not so competent i'm really not confident and i'm holding back and that's where i get shot a lot so I would say as well, the biggest thing I've learned recently or applied recently is play with better players and put yourself in a lot tougher situations to learn. So speaking about that, if you think about yourself, like maybe six months ago, what things would you recommend to do or maybe not to do? Or maybe three things to do, three things to avoid. 
Okay, All right, let me just have a quick think about. I need a sip mm -hmm. of wine for this one. Secret. <laughs> okay, three things to avoid. Okay. So, if I was to go back six months and and have a word with myself, I would probably say the three things to avoid is playing for play sake and playing on not the right mood. I would say that's number one for me. Number two is uh, so don't just, get just caught. Uh, one question about the, the first Sorry, one. Go. What do you mean uh, the right mood? So I'd say play in the right mood. And what I mean by that is mm -hmm. I want to play because I've set myself maybe an hour, two hours aside to play. But I'm kind of, the day's not gone right, whether it's work, home, personal, and I'm already tilted. So I'll go in and I'll hot drop and I'll get killed immediately. And already the resilient levels are not great. So I might play three or four games and then I'll quit and I'll come out of it and I'll feel bad about my, my play. That's nothing to do with my skill and it's nothing to do with um, the game. It's to do with the resilience and how I've gone in on a mindset into the game. So I've learned that when I'm tilted just with the day, just either say to yourself, I'm going in for fun and that's it. And I'm going to laugh and I'm not bothered about playing properly or just don't go in at all. That's one thing I would say uh, to avoid for me. The second thing is the friends trap. It's great to have friends and it's great to have, you know, regular teammates and regular squads. But you are just honing the same habits that are bad. So I play with two uh, regular squad mates who are the, the most wonderful people. They play for pure pleasure and fun. Whereas I like to develop and challenge and, you know, get stuck in and try all these different things, that a game within a game within this game. And what I found was I was selling myself to my squad and not doing what I wanted to do. So what I would end up doing is playing with them, nursing my bad habits more, not saying it's them, but nursing those bad habits I have with them more. And then I would have to come away and undo that and do three more hours play to get back to where I wanted to be. So it's good to have friends. It's great to have the right squad mates and, be, and have all that fun. But also you, you need to recognise when you need to tuck yourself away and, and go and develop. And it took me a good eight months to not feel guilty about not playing with them all the time. Interesting. So that that's number two. Um, and number three, avoid anybody that says anything like the following. You're trash, you're dog water, you're, uh, you know, anything remotely toxic that's adverse to your game. At the end of the day, it is a video game. It is a very skilled game and I can see it becoming an extremely popular esport in the future. But at the end of the day, it's just a game. So for me, I, I don't class myself as leisure, amateur, comp or anything. I kind of float in between everything because I'm just nosy and I like to get involved um, and see what's out there. But if you're a, play, a le sorry, a, a leisure player, don't listen to what everybody else says, you know, that might be skills above you. They've got a different agenda. So, um, you know, I find a lot of this game can, can be... Um, what's the word, an adverse effect to the pleasure that it can give. So I wouldn't listen to other people's comments. That I would definitely ditch. Okay. So the three things that I would recommend is, um, well, not that I'd recommend, sorry, uh, that I would do for myself if I could go back six months would be to pick up the guns earlier. I'm just learning the AWP, which is crazy. Uh, I've been afraid of it in a pub game because I know I'll lose the battle and I can't get a shot. So, you know, the training park has just been a godsend really for it. Um, I would say to myself six months ago, just get over all of all of the guns and become really familiar with them so that you can land on a hot drop, pick any gun up and destroy the enemy as best you can. So that would be number one for, for me. Number two is movement. I used to ground walk an awful lot. I think there's a, a strat for ground walking. I don't, you know, I think all the time when you're mm -hmm. flying in the air, you've got more chance of getting shot. Um, but movement. 
so you know climb build move fly side fly like you know you you taught us all these things right at the beginning um and do that more and and literally rotate the map and move around the map and glide around it where it's effortless that to me now feels so good in the game whereas before i was kind of trudging along and it felt really lazy and fatigued so i definitely say you know to my younger self i suppose uh, to to definitely and the third one would be do more comp uh competition is you know for all the bad names it gets and for all the sweaty players it has there's a lo lovely bunch of people out there a lot of them are very kind with their time and they'll offer it out and the comp scene especially in um arc league is uh very welcoming very inclusive and they kind of cater for everybody what it does it gives you a place to go it's something a little bit different again to pub so it keeps the game fresh and and, and alive but also it gives you a different style of play comp is so different to pubs completely different style of play different strategies different theories you know it depends what the point system is so you've got all of this to take into account and it makes you so much more together uh, with your team i feel so i'd say i i would have got involved in comp a lot sooner nice and competitive games are there any places where people can play like when they below level 30 for example when they just start the game absolutely um you can get involved in competition at any level now so you know we've really only been in this game for what 14 15 months now 14 months um and mob toyco started it off before there was even private rooms they were having competitions which is crazy when you learn how they did it um and it was really just you know the sweaty fight club so that kind of kicked competition off and then mob toyco developed into arc leagues which is arc league and now they have a tiering system with um playoffs relegations uh promotions and you go from diamond <clears throat> excuse me diamond which is top tier to gold and then you go to purple and blue and then they're about to look at a white league and if you look at all of those it's the colors of the guns oh, so nice. you've got your gold your purple your blue and your white and you start at the bottom depending on where your league points are um you know if you have got gold level league points they're not going to stick you in white because obviously they don't want the white lobby uh, for new players to get trampled so there is an element of science put into the league points and they do look at that but ultimately you'd enter into white you'd work your way up to blue you'd go from blue to purple purple to gold and hopefully gold to diamond so amazing there's a lot of a lot open for everyone and they have a massive scrim scene which is just the most amazing part of it every single day they scrim on uh, american and eu times so it's friendly and then tonight we have just launched uh find a team scrims which is for all the solo players that want to play scrims and get involved but don't have a team so i set the lobby up where i just rotate the teams they find out who they play great with they buddy up and then they go out and they go and play squads together and then they start to gel and form that um, sort of strategy between their team and that's awesome synergy and chemistry. I, yeah. I took part in a couple of events you organized and i highly recommend that can we add maybe a couple of links or in the description of the video so people can find places where you can search for for the league or competitive games absolutely yeah i can give you all the discord links there's only really one discord link you need because it kind of houses everything everything's under one umbrella which is great mm -hmm and it's not just leagues they do open tournaments as well so they'll do things like you know draft tournaments we we did last night i'm a captain we picked you know in a snake draft format which was absolutely fun to do and it means that you get you know a really skilled level player a medium level player and then you know somebody that's quite new in so what that new player gets is that experience of playing with somebody like you know pintail or good bet or you know hey it's blitz and all these kind of people so they do a lot of open tournaments there's a duos league which is mixed to try and uh you know celebrate women in the game so bringing the women out into competition 
and buddying up with a male and it's a mixed tournament so they've got a league then we have you know hide and seek we play all goofy games a bit of world war a bit of uh, legions tournament at the weekend so there's lots for everyone it's not just league player nice fantastic so in addition to being a very good player and a fantastic person to play with you have a unique experience of organizing community in population one so i'm going to ask a couple of questions that are for you probably the best person in the world to, to answer so maybe the same advice that you give yourself six months ago if somebody wanted to organize something like an event or a competition in population one three things you would recommend to do that people usually kind of either fail or they're extremely important because you're, you know them like based on your experience and maybe three things to, to avoid. Okay. So with regards to organizing events, um, it looks very simple from the outset. It really does. Um, but it is extremely difficult. There's a lot that goes into it. You know, there's variables. You don't know, you know if the lobby's going to crash. You don't know how many people are going to enter. So everything that moves on a variable has an outcome. And what I mean by that is if you adjust the settings but don't think about the player experience or the team experience, it's going to deliver an outcome that is not expected to that team or that player. The same with people signing up. And, you know, you'll remember when I was organizing early on and I'm like, you know, don't put your name down and then don't turn up because you'll get a, a lobby full of 24 people that have put their name down and then 12 won't turn up. So the lobby shrinks and the experience for everybody is completely affected. So organizing is not easy. You need Google Sheets and documents or automated systems, bots in channels that can manage all this stuff. So check-ins, who's turning up, you know, so that you know that if seven teams aren't turning up, you can reduce your lobbies because seven haven't turned up and they're not going into that one lobby. It, there's a lot of science in it. Thinking about new players, what would you recommend to them? Because you built one of their, they're probably their most active community uh, for population one, and you saw a lot of people joining. Okay, so for new players, what I would recommend is um, definitely getting involved in some of the groups. You know, some groups aren't the greatest with regards to agenda or toxicity. So, you know, if you recognize that, try and keep away from it. It's really counterproductive to, to how your game wants to be. But some groups are fantastic. They've got really supportive people. Joining ARC, I would definitely say 100% as a new player, do it. There's a lot of activity going on there and events for you to join in and meet new people. Definitely um, practice in the training park. So, you know, have a development time set aside. Spend 30 minutes in the training park, let's say, and then go into maybe a solo bot battle, three games maybe, and then go and do three pubs. Come away and then go tomorrow and do the same and do the same. And repetition is, um, you know, it, 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 you end up becoming master of whatever it is that you achieve. And I remember Toyko saying to me very early on at one of the training events, if you're bad at something, do it a hundred times. And if you haven't mastered it a hundred times, do it 200. So I would definitely recommend that. And that, and that's helped me um, get better as well. And as a new player, I'd say keep away from the stats. Don't worry about them. Um, find good people. But if you are serious about the game, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, you know, find people that want to develop on the same pace as you. And, you know, if you just want to enjoy the game and have a laugh and, you know, Friday night, silly daft games then that's fine you can find those people as well but they are out there just do a bit of searching and research oh, fantastic thanks a lot that was so 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 helpful one extra question is about your experience of playing playing with uh, the best players in the world because you you've been playing this game almost like when the, after it was, was launched so and you you know everyone so I've played with some really cool people, actually. So, Samachi, I mean, if you can get a game with him, then, like, absolutely 100% take it. Um, the guy's just amazing at the game, and his content creation is is second to none as well. 
So, you know, he spends an awful lot of time with community leading with regards to things like, you know, updating us all the time on all of the, the patch notes. You know, every time there's a change, you know, in the meta or if there's been a nerf, you know, he's always consistently churning out videos that are absolutely on point and real time. So I definitely say, you know, if you can get a game with Samachi, it's worth it. It, it. It's amazing. You won't play because you're just watching him. He's an absolute <laughs> machine. JT Dubs also uh, great fun to play with. Um, shouts at me all the time. Like we argue like uh, brother and sister, but I absolutely love it. Um, he just wants me to get better and it's great. Um, but he's a massive kind hearted soul. And not only is a great player, but he does a lot of shout casting. His stream is excellent and the way that he really understands the game and the terminologies and everything that he brings to shoutcasting is second to none. I haven't seen a shoutcaster like it in any other VR game at all. Um, so that's great. Jert is another community leader. He headed up the panel uh, on the Vegas trip when everybody met in real life in Vegas. And, you know, they had some great topics. They talked about pretty much everything, communities, streamers, content. You know, we even had on the table toxicity and all these different things and personas and characters. Um, one person I love playing with is Sadist Clown. He's yes, probably my like favorite. Oh, he's my favorite. His content's good. He's got the nicest character. He's not, there's not an ounce of malice in him. He helps you in every game. I've seen him play with brand new players. He's so patient. And then, you know, he pushes me. Um, so he just has these massive community leading skills um, in and around the game, which is, you know, I don't think any of us can match. We're all in that kind of like trying to build communities. But I think Sadis Clown is probably one of the best community leaders. Um, and also, you know, people like Scanter and Pintail and Rickles the Clown, they're all really up and coming players. And, you know, all on the leaderboards, grinding it out, but really fun people to play with. So there's a lot. Yeah, it, it's been fun. And I'd say anybody that you can get in a lobby with that's, you know, of a diamond level player, absolutely do it. It'll just, you know, you'll, you'll just increase your skills and learn something completely new.